I am Chaplain Robert Kinegi, and uh, welcome to our devotions. Thank you, Mary Smith, for playing for us. <clears throat> Jesus calls us God of grace and God of glory, and great is thy faithfulness this morning. <clears throat> My scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Verses 1 to 13, and I'm going to read that for us this morning. <clears throat> Paul writes, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. <clears throat> now these uh, things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. We, we must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example. And they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not uncommon to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This season of Lent is a journey, a, maybe a kind of a downhill journey. <clears throat> and you notice our steps in the front uh, this morning. Uh, the steps indicate, these footsteps indicate a journey, which leads us to the cross. But this way down is also the way up. It's a way of suffering. It is the way of suffering, but also the way of healing. The problem is that sometimes we fight that descent, that journey, and find ourselves getting stuck. Kind of like the Israelites did. Paul uses that journey, the journey of the Israelites out of Egypt and into the wilderness as a metaphor of God's provision and salvation. Despite all they had received, they resisted instead of embracing the descent, that journey meant for their healing. Instead of receiving the testing meant to strengthen them, they tested God by insisting on their own way. Instead of embracing God's providence, their complaints ground their progress to a halt, and they were stuck. So, what might be so wrong with complaining when things are bad, we might ask. We've all done it. Why did it un end up so badly for the Israelites who got stuck? Complaining looks for someone or something to hold responsible for our discomfort. It keeps us from seeing that whatever descent we are experiencing might just be the way of suffering that leads to healing. We know that following Jesus on the descent to the cross, that there will be a resurrection. That's the good news. Consider this prayer of radical receiving, embracing the descents of life as a way of life and hope from Sacred Space Process. It's called The Welcoming Prayer by Father Thomas Keating. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it's for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or myself. I open to the love and the presence of God and God's action within. Amen. What's well, hard for me, and, and maybe for you, to release what it means to be in control or to have control um, or not to be concerned about our safety or security. I recall two different times I definitely needed to welcome God into. Um, these were work situations. Twice ending jobs and not knowing what was next, needing to find a new one. I needed to find a uh, financial security for my family. One time I made that decision for a change. It felt right to make that change, but I still did not know what was next. The other time was not a planned move. However, God marvelously directed my path in both of these situations, guided me into a new journey that led me to fulfilling opportunities. When we welcome what is in our life, it doesn't mean that we don't want or need change or growth. It means that we accept what comes our way and invite God into it. In his presence, we bring to him our needs, our desires, our thoughts, our emotions, our circumstances. Instead of fighting these things and those around us, we welcome them and welcome God into them so that we can be transformed as we consent to his presence in all areas of our lives. To fight against reality, to demand and to grasp onto our desires is one way of denying that God alone is our source of life, our source of love. When we cling to our needs and our de not desires or demands that what is be different, we are attempting to control. When we let go and meet God in our reality, then we actually do become free and experience his presence, which does heal provides for our needs, and transforms us. If we grasp and control our lives, we will inevitably create a, uh, substitutes for a genuine resting in God and his provision. What are your substitutes Christ in you, Christ in me, Christ in us, the hope of glory, the path of mystery, which is the Christian life, is one where we experience God within, defenseless, open, consenting to his presence in everything that comes our way. This is the true self that knows experientially that he is secure, protected, and loved. When we live in this new creation that God has given us, we can let go of our need to control ourselves and others. In this place, we are connected to God's love and power. May we embrace the descents of life as a way of life and hope. As we follow Jesus to the cross, may we look for that hope 
the resurrection that will be. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love, for your protection, for your guidance. Help us to welcome you into our everyday situations. There's things that feel out of control. There's things that we want to change and lead us to the res- to, uh, into the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. Mary is going to be playing for us. It's a song called, It's an Easy Road. And the words are, go like this. For many are thorns on the way. It's not e- an easy road. But the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. It's not an easy road. There are trials and troubles, and many are the dangers we meet. But Jesus guards and keeps so that nothing can harm us and smooth the rugged path for our feet. Though I often footstore and weary from travel, though I'm often bowed down with care, I better, a better day is coming when home in glory will rest in perfect peace over there. Chorus, the chorus says, no, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks with me and brightens my journey and lightens every heavy load. <laughs>